I'm going to be giving you guys a structure that will help you to really kickstart your content journey so that you'll be able to spend less time in your content work. 30 days of LinkedIn content, planning in 30 minutes. If you actually understand that content today is the one that will generate leads for you, you will start to realize that there is a priority that you need to put into allocating this, into allocating and putting your energy into this work. When it comes to content creation, how do I do, how do I actually spend about less than 30 minutes in a week for me to be able to generate 30 content in a month, right? What you can do is to have at least a minimum of 20 content in one month. And the science to this is actually very simple. You just need to find a way to simplify it so that you will be able to be consistent in terms of your content. So the game is all about consistency, guys. Consistency is the one that will win in social media. What If, if you are consistent with the amount of content that you post, the algorithm, number one, it will push your content out. That's number one. And number two, when you are consistent, unconsciously and subconsciously, you are also training your audience so that they will be able to understand, oh, okay, you know what? For Madeline, for example, Madeline's content works like this. So I'm going to look forward for Madeline's content when it comes out. So in a way, what you're doing is that you're creating consistency to train your audience. You're creating consistency to also support the algorithm to push your content out. Now, in order for this strategy to work, there are prerequisites that you need to do. Number one, if you really want to make sure that your content strategy is working well for you, the number one rule that you need to make sure that you do is that you need to clearly define your ideal client. And I cannot emphasize how important this is. So what do I mean by the ideal client? It's the person that you really want to sell to, the kind of dream client that you want to attract to your business. You do not want to have nightmare clients. What do I mean by nightmare clients? The type of clients that wants to have more discount, they bargain for this, bargain for that, right? Uh, complaints a lot, dramatic, right? Those, those are like the negative energy kind of client that you do not want to have coming to you. You want to have clients that want to work with you as a partner, okay? And I think this is, a, this is an entrepreneur dream. A lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, they want to have this kind of client. But it's also very interesting to, uh, to, to realize this. Uh, whenever we do this exercise with a lot of our students, when they come into our program, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs do not understand the type of people that they wanted to attract to their business. At the end of the day, when you are not clear about who you want, you will sell your product to almost everyone. You really want to spend time to identify who your ideal client is. The, the kind of people that you can actually uh, provide the perfect solution to them, whatever problems they have, you need to get that one clear. If you don't get this one clear, you're going to struggle in your content. When we teach our students to create their content, what we always tell our students to do is always think of that one person that you like that has become your client and you want to start thinking as if you're speaking to that person when you're creating the content. Get your ideal client clearly defined. And that's one of the process that we do in our 14 weeks program, where we will actually spend some time to get you to understand who the client is. Now, there are other prerequisites, there are other requirements. You got to define your niche. Okay. If you are a financial planner, there are thousands of other financial planners out there. If you are trying to compete to all of the financial planners, you're going to struggle. Rather than trying to compete with everyone, you want to find a market segment that is unique for you. You are comfortable with that segment. This is something that we do in our program as well, where we actually help our students to identify their niche so that when they create their content, they will basically be speaking to that group of people that will really understand your solution. Because when you're speaking to them, it's as if you can relate to their problem and pain. So you got to define your niche. Very important for you to do that. Okay, so you got to define your offering. Another thing that we do as part of a process in our 14 weeks program. And what we do in here is that we get you to come up with a clearly defined product. We, we get you to actually understand your unique mechanism. 
Your value proposition, it needs to be there. Yeah. What do you stand for? Right? What do you believe in? Your personality, right? This is important, yeah, because remember this again, yeah. People buy from people that they like. People buy from people that they can relate to. So when your value proposition is not clearly defined, it's going to be very difficult for people to come in and buy your product because they want to get with someone that they have the same value with you. And I'm going to spend a lot more time in this part, content pillar, right? If you want to have a clearly defined content strategy, you need to have a content pillar. The moment you start thinking about having a content marketing strategy as part of your uh, marketing effort, you need to start thinking about the content pillar. Basically, we are talking about three, minimum of three to five different types of content that you will consistently create that is in relation to your product and services to your brand. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of content pillar. Because I sell LinkedIn, because I'm promoting LinkedIn as the platform of choice, my number one content pillar is LinkedIn authority building. That's number one. Okay. So whenever I'm creating content, I will always be talking that those are one of my main topic. So we're talking about your, the main topic. Okay. So there are many sub topic that you can create from that one big topic itself. I can come up with LinkedIn strategy for 2022 for second quarter, for the second half of 2022. I can talk about the 10 LinkedIn mistakes that entrepreneurs do. I can talk about 10 benefits or why you can actually use LinkedIn to promote the business. So all topics in relation to LinkedIn, right? That's my content pillar. Okay. So you want to start thinking about content pillar for your product and services. If you were to create a content strategy for yourself, what would be your number one content pillar? The content pillar can be related to your business. It can also be related to your personality too. Because one of the things that you want to do is that when you're creating content, you want to get people to know you, like you, and trust you, right? Okay? So they want, you want to get people to know what you do. You want to get people to trust you as the subject matter expert in the industry. And you want the people to, uh, to like you as well, right? Likes create sales. Minimum content pillar that I always suggest entrepreneurs to have is to have at least three, minimum three, maximum five. What do you think would be the best content pillar that will suit you and your business? What do you think will be the three or five content pillars that will basically suit you and your business? So re remember this again. You do not want to just be rigid about the content pillar. It's all about the business and all that. You can also sell your personality too, right? So one of the content pillars that you can have could be about your lifestyle, right? the behind the scene of the work that you do. That could be content pillar number two as well. Your content pillar can be some fun stuff that basically can get people to come closer to you. One of our students, one of our content pillar is actually food. So she shares a lot of food stuff on LinkedIn, which a lot of people think that you can't do that, but actually you can if you know how to set the tone for your content. So here's the thing, guys. The moment you start thinking from a content pillar perspective, you can start thinking about different, different subtopic that you can start to create on a weekly basis. So a lot of people, what they do is that they struggle because they always think about uh, how to write. You don't want to think about how to write yet. You want to start thinking from the easiest angle ever. So I'm going to give you some tip on this. How do you do this? Always think from an angle of title first because your headline is the one that will attract people to want to read your content. So always think from a title angle, and then let's look into how can you, how can you spend your 30 minutes weekly every week so that you will be able to create better content for yourself. Okay. Your content pillar. Okay. It has to be like a crossover between these two, what your brand care about, what your audience care about, right? And you bring that together. That's where your content pillar is. As much as you care about stress management, but start thinking from an angle of your audience. What is it about stress management that you think your audience would want to know? 
Think from there. Always think from an audience perspective. Okay? That will make your life so much easier. So, once you get that one done, okay, all of that is clearly defined, then you will be able to start strategizing your content on a weekly basis. And the way I do it is that I spend not more than 10 minutes in three days every week for me to start creating content. And I never, I do not encourage people to do last minute work. This is some of the things that a lot of people like to do. They want to post something at 9 a.m. They only start thinking about what to post at 8.30 a.m. That is a recipe for disaster. Because you are basically treating your content as just a by the way product. There is a strategy that we use in PopCon that has helped our students to write content effortlessly. The strategy is called content batching. What is content batching? Rather than trying to write all of the content at one go, you break it up into segments and you spend only a certain amount of time for each of the segments. And that's what makes your content becomes easier. You will be able to have more time for yourself. And it makes it easier for you because you're working in advance and it will help you to increase your productivity tremendously. What it does is that it helps you to prioritize the right message rather than you chin chai what by the end of the day, right? You're not hitting the right spot. So you want to start thinking from a systematic approach when it comes to nurturing your client through content. There are four stages to this in terms of creating your own content. And what are the stages? I'm just going to do a math right now, okay? Let's, let's assume I'm giving you guys Saturday and Sunday break. So you guys don't need to create content on Saturday and Sunday, okay? But we do have some of our students who are gung-ho because they understand this concept. Huh? The more content you create, the more visibility you will get. So we have some of our students who go all the way. They created seven posts per week, Monday to Sunday. They are basically using what we are teaching them to design the content in such a way that it doesn't take too much of your time. I'm going to give you guys the breakdown for content. Yeah? So if you look into seven content per week, that's about 28 content per month. Okay, let's just say 31 content per month. Some people can do it. Some people can't do it, right? Uh, but if you follow the strategy, you should be able to be able to do that as well. But if that's too heavy for you, I'm going to give you a discount. Talking about 20 content in a month. That's five posts in a week. Too heavy, still too much, okay? How about a minimum of three content per week? Three content. So if you do three content per week, right? Three times four, that's 12 contents per month. So if you start breaking it down like that, you start to realize, hey, the number is actually not that much, eh? okay? It's not that much content for you to create in order for you to build your presence online. Okay, see that, huh? If you play the math game, okay, lah, three, con three content per week is too much. How about two content per week? Now, here's the beauty of, uh, the beautiful part about LinkedIn. Unlike Facebook and TikTok, where you need to create multiple content in one day for you to be able to gain tractions from people, the beautiful part about LinkedIn is this. As long as you are consistent, you just need to have a minimum of at least two to three content per week for you to start generating results. So notice the math. Huh? Once you start seeing the math from that angle, that the game is consistency, maybe perhaps for a lot of you, you can start small first. Okay? So let's just say if you post five pieces of content on LinkedIn per week or 20 pieces of content per month, right? Here's the math. You don't have to do all the heavy stuff, guys. <laughs> okay? For me, what we always encourage students to do is that when you create content, remember the game is consistency. Eh? What's more important is consistency. So the type of content can be any type of content. Right? So I always encourage newbies, when you want to develop content, 
you break it up into heavy posts, easy posts. Okay, heavy posts are the type of content that is long. So let's just say if you're creating an article or a newsletter, it's long in format. But when people read it, right, people get excited. They feel there's a lot of value in the content and they feel connected to you. So if you look at it from that angle, as long as you create one piece of heavy content every week, that's only four content, guys. If you take a look at it, four heavy content. I'm talking about newsletters. I'm talking about long posts with photo. If you want to create like a video, right? Or maybe you want to do your own live session once per week, that's good enough. We consider that as part of a heavy format content. Where, when people consume it, it gives them a lot of value. People are looking forward for it. So think from strategically. All you need to do is actually just to create one long con form content per week. And sometimes, right, you can also use the heavy posts to create like ebooks that you can give away to people. Okay. And you don't have to do this so many times in, uh, in a month. Sometimes some of this ebook, you can recycle it again and again. Okay. You can recycle it. So maybe perhaps you can just do like two ebook lead magnet that you can give away to people. And there's a reason why we do e-lead magnet, okay? That one is something that we teach in our program. I can't tell you that tonight. You don't have the time to do it. And there's also a strategy that you need to implement in order for you to be able to attract people to want to download your ebook so that you can turn the ebook transaction into a meeting, okay? That will allow you to have like 50% chance to close the client. So think about it from an angle. So if you take a look at it, there's four heavy content per week, uh, per month. So that's not so much, okay? A lot of people like to complicate stuff. What would be considered an easy post? Uh, a poll, that's an easy post. Just to get people to engage. The idea of an easy post is as simple as this. As long as you get people to want to engage with your post, that's what an easy post is about. An easy post is half the effort of the heavy post. If you add in the math, even though if you're doing just twice per week, that's very easy, right? One simple post, one heavy post. Because the game right now, what you want to do is that you want to get people to engage and interact. Start with two first. Once you have built that consistency, you have become more comfortable, you have developed your skill, then increase it gradually. Okay, guys, it's just exactly like working out, okay? When you're working out to lose weight, you don't run first, right? You walk first. Once you walk, once you become comfortable with that, then you go, you take one step not one, one step further. You start jogging. Then you start running, okay? Then you start competing for marathon. That's the game. The game is sustainability. The game is for you to grow as you go. And the next part to this, I'm gonna share you the strategy on how we can actually do 30 content in a month. Next part to this, content batch. 10 minutes daily in three days. Okay, guys, the game is on a weekly basis, you have different team in terms of your content creation. What kind of team are we talking about? For me, right, I don't, I don't spend one whole entire day to finish up a few content. What I do is I spend 10 minutes for three days in a week that I will allocate into my schedule. What I do usually is that I spend that 10 minutes to do like really quality work in relation to that, to that particular team for the week. At the end of the day, everything that you do, right? The North Star of everything that you do when it comes to content is always your content pillar. Right, guys? So your content pillar is, the, is your North Star. Every time when you create content, always look back to the content pillar. Okay, these are my five content pillar. I will always go back to these five. Okay? Week one, how I do this? I spend 10 minutes, three days. So Monday... Wednesday, Sunday. That's usually my content, my content planning day. Yeah. So what I do is that week one is always research week. I take a look at research in terms of what kind of topic I can talk about. Uh, look into what's trending, what's going on in the market right now. Yeah. So those are some of the things that you want to do. So when I do my research, what I do is that I start consuming content too. So it becomes a fun activity for me. So I don't get stressed out. So where do I get my ideas? Sometimes just by, by reading books, consuming stuff on TikTok, consuming stuff 
on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, take a look at what's trending on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, go to answerthepublic.com. Check check out some of the stuff that they have there. Type in uh, type in my content pillar and what are the, some of the things I can talk about. So you gotta do your research. So I spend only ten minutes a day in that three days in a week to just look, see what's available, write a journal on it, put it aside, right? And then the next following week, only I start looking into creation. And when I do creation, it's the same thing again. 10 minutes per day for three days. I always do the easy one first. A lot of people, what they do is that they like to spend time to create content that's more difficult first. Okay? So when you start doing that, you're basically digging yourself a hole and at the end of the day, nothing is being done because you overanalyze and paralyze. So that's what I do. I create on week two, just on creation. Just write, 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 create, 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 create. Then week number, number three, only I start editing. There are a lot of software out there that you can actually use efficiently as a way for you to edit your posts, edit your content in such a way that you can start automating some of the stuff to make your content editing to become easier. 10 minutes per day, three, three times a week. On the last week, on week four, I will plan things up and I start publishing it by using some of the available content, right? Scheduling uh, platform that's totally legal and it's free. So everything has already been put into schedule publish it, boom, next month, one whole entire month, everything has already been put this way. So that's the game, guys. Always think one month before to create the content for the next following month. And then you repeat the cycle and the process again. When you become better at this, you can actually increase the number of activity that you do and you can plan things ahead even two or three months or even one year. I'm going to give you guys a template on how you can actually create your own content calendar. And what, what's, what's brilliant about this template is that when you have the template, you will be able to plan things out because uh, one of the things that we always do when it comes to creating our content, first thing we do is that we always think about the client first. So if I want to create this content, who am I thinking about? Okay, always think about that one person. Imagine that person is in front of you and act as if you're gonna be talking to that person. That's the kind of mentality you wanna have when you're creating content. Two, Right? Once you identify who you're talking to, two, come up with a title. Right? And that's what you do for week one. Week number one, think about who you want to talk to, what you want to talk about, and fill up your whole entire schedule. You've done that, that is half the battle done. Okay, guys? You've done that, that's half the battle done. Remember, that's, four, that's the four principles in terms of batch, con uh, batch content. Week one, research. Week two, write. Create. Week three, start editing it, right? Make, uh, beautify it. If you need to have like, uh, you need to put design into it and all that in Canva, you can do that. And all of this doesn't require a lot of time. 10 minutes per day for three days, right? Every week you do that. And by the end of the month, you publish it, put it into a calendar, automate it, one month content done, just like that, okay? Again, guys, 30 minutes per day, 30 minutes per week, right? 30 minutes per week, 10 minutes for every session that you do. Break up the work. That's what you do. Make it easy for you, yeah? Hey, guys. I, I hope you guys are getting, are getting lots of value, tons of value from tonight's session. I'll see you again.